Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Like always, I start by taping down my paper with some masking tape. And for today I have a very easy beginner-friendly landscape tutorial. I erase parts of the sketch that I do not need and I color the sky entirely with some yellow ochre. I use medium pressure for this or you can use a very light pressure and just take your time until you build up a nice a saturated color. I'm applying this rather flat. I'm not going for a gradient right now. I just need a base color which is yellow ochre. Then for the middle of the sky I use some raw sienna which is my next darker shade and for the top I'm going to use some walnut brown. These are the three colors I'll be using throughout my painting. Feel free to switch them for any of your favorite colors. You can do a light blue, dark blue and a darker blue. You can use a yellow, orange and red, whatever colors you like. Then I take my watercolor brush and I start uh, blending from the bottom. I apply a good amount of water, I just dip my brush in the jar, apply the water on the bottom of my sky, dip it in the jar again, reapply until I have a good amount of water because you need a good amount of water to work with watercolor pencils. Otherwise they're going to dry on you way too quickly and it's going to be a mess. And if you have too much water, then you can just pick it up with a napkin. So it's always better to have too much than too little. Then once I reach the top of the sky, I bring it downwards. That way most of the water is absorbed by the page. Once dry, again I take my yellow ochre and I repeat the same exact steps for the bottom portion of my painting. I'm applying it in a horizontal motion because this is the sky and a sea or a lake and once look a bit extra smooth slash dramatic that is the vibe i'm going for with this painting then again i take my raw sienna and i apply it in the middle of the lake going downwards For the very bottom, again, I use walnut brown. I focus it also a bit on the sides of the lake, the parts that are closest to the tape. And of course, also on the bottom. Then just like with the sky, I take water, I apply it on the edge on the horizon, I take more water, I apply that until I get a tiny bow, I can move around and everything looks smooth to me. As I go down, I start to lose some of the water because it's already activated the previous bits of the painting, so I add more and more and more. In this first passage, I only focus on applying more water and covering everything and activate everything. And on the second passage, from the bottom upwards, is where I focus on blending it and making it more smooth. Once dry, I take my black, I've sharpened it to a pretty fine point, and I outline some basic mountain shapes. I do the top and a straight line for the bottom, nothing uh, crazy here. And then I'm just going to roughly color it in. I'm applying the black mostly on the bottom side of my mountains. I'm going to add walnut brown on top of it. And it's perfectly fine if some bits are not uh, fully covered. It doesn't matter. It's a sunset. We're going to work on this layer with the brush, so don't stress about this right now. Also, uh, keep in mind that the level of saturation you get, how dark, how vivid your colors are going to be, does depend in parts on the quality of the pencils you use. I did a video about that last week. If you want, you can check it out. I'm going to try and add a card somewhere around here. And a little hack if your pencils are not that great, just Take your time, apply them again and again and slowly build up the color. Uh, don't go as fast as me, I just need one layer to get this level of saturation, but don't be afraid to take your time. 
Then I take my brush and notice that I had not dipped it into the water jar. You need this rather dry uh, to smooth out the mountain. So because if you do tap it in the jar to get clean water and then you start activating and blending the mountain, it's going to end up much, much lighter because water dilutes paint. So I very slightly go over any bits that have some uh, white spaces just to fix those. I'm not uh, going for 100% perfection like I already said. Then again, I sharpen the black to a very fine point and I start drawing and outlining a little bold shape right beneath the mountain. Pretty much looks like a banana. Then I draw a tiny person sitting on top of it. Again, having a very sharp point helps tremendously for this because watercolor pencils and good quality pencils tend to be a bit smooth, sort of like eyeliner, if that makes any sense, if you've ever used eyeliner. So it's a bit difficult to get fine details and you need to sharpen them very, very nicely for that or to paint tiny things like this tiny person. And if drawing is not your thing, there is going to be a traceable available at my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts. We also do full-time tutorials there and you get extra neat stuff. Plus, you also help support me and the channel. And like always, all of the supplies and the reference slash inspiration picture because I just liked the mountain and the little person and I painted, but I completely did not respect the color scheme, I didn't like it, so I switched it to something I did like. But point is, the picture will also be available down below in the description of this video. So I just color in the person in the both with the black, then I take uh, the black again, and I do the reflection for the both, putting it upside down, like mirroring each other. It's easier to show you this rather than explain it with words. And then for the reflection of the mountain, I'm holding my pencil, which has been sharp to a very fine point, so a lot of the pencil lead, graphite, paint, I don't know what you call it, is showing. So I hold it pretty much horizontal, parallel to my sketchbook, and use the white part of the quote-unquote graphite, well, it's not graphite, but you get what I'm saying, to get that very light hovering, to get very, very uh, soft, diffused reflections. Plus, that way, I don't waste the sharpness of the pencil, so I don't have to resharpen it, so I'm saving on the product as well. Then, with uh, the point which stayed sharp, I draw some skipping rocks on the bottom of my painting, making some bigger ones and some smaller ones, and then I just color them with black. For the bigger ones, I like to skip a bit on the top. I think it just makes it look more like a realistic boulder slash stone. I don't know, I like it more when I leave a tiny gap empty on the top. Then I go over the black with some brown, that way it balances the painting out, it makes it look uh, more harmonious because we already used brown for the sky and for the lake and if you go in and introduce a brand new color without mewing it down, it may look a bit funky. Then I underline uh, the skipping rocks to give them a bit of a reflection as well, just very, very lightly. And again, with my brush, which I have not wetted, I just go over any bits of the rocks that have the painting showing through them, that have the background or white bits of the paper peeking through. And of course, I add a couple of seagulls in the sky. I forgot to activate the bolt, but I'm going to do that in a bit. And I start to slowly peel off the tape in the opposite direction to avoid the paper from ripping apart. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of June and thank you all for watching. And if you've made it this far, I'm going to give you a bonus tip because I actually ripped my paper while untaping this. If part of uh, your page does rip off, like it comes up with the tape, go in the opposite direction, save that piece, add some water, press it down and it's going to glue itself back together. So thank you all for watching and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye!